This is Sarah Threadster Nurse RN.com, and in this video, I want to be going over placenta previa. And this video is part of an NCLEX review series over maternity nursing. And as always, at the end of this YouTube video, you can access the free quiz that will test you on this condition. So let's get started. First, let's start out talking about what is this condition. It is where there is abnormal attachment of the placenta in the uterus near or over the cervical opening. And we don't want our placenta to be there. Where should the placenta normally attach? It should attach in the top or the side of the uterus, as you can see in this picture here. Our placenta should not be down here where the cervical opening is, because right off the bat, you can see that we're gonna have problems delivering this baby vaginally, because if the baby tried to come through here with this placenta in the way, can rip open that placenta. And remember, the placenta delivers nutrients and oxygen and removes waste to our baby through the umbilical cord. And as those contractions are happening, that cervix is dilating, thinning out. It can rip the placenta, make mom hemorrhage, and cause fetal distress. So we don't want that. Now, what can cause placenta previa? Well, advanced maternal age, greater than 35, or mom's carrying more than one baby, like twins or triplets. She's already had a baby before uses cocaine or smokes, or there's scarring in the uterus from some type of surgery, like a C-section or removal of fibroids. Now there are different types of placenta previa, so let's take a look at them. Here we have total placenta previa, and this is where the placenta has attached completely over the cervical opening, so it's totally covering the cervical opening. Next, we have partial placenta previa, and this is where the placenta is partially covering the cervix. And then you can also have marginal placenta, and this is where the placenta is covering just the edge of the cervical opening. Now, the cases and the treatment for placenta previa vary depending on what type of placenta previa the patient has, is she stable, is baby stable, and what is going on? So a lot of times this condition is diagnosed at the 20 week ultrasound, and they'll be able to see where the placenta is. And if the placenta is the marginal where it's low line or partial, sometimes as the woman advances in her pregnancy, hits the third trimester, that placenta will migrate upward just as the uterus is expanding upward. So in a sense, it'll correct the previa, but they will reevaluate that again at about the 32 week ultrasound and confirm the location of the placenta. But usually if it's a complete type of placenta previa, it will stay and the, the woman, whenever it's time to deliver, will usually have to deliver via C-section. Now let's look at the signs and symptoms that present in this condition. And we're going to remember the word previa to help us remember these specific signs and symptoms. Because on NCLEX and your nursing lecture exams, they love to take this condition and compare it with abruptio placentae. And they love to ask about the differences between signs and symptoms, like which one has bright red bleeding versus which one has dark red bleeding and which one the bleeding tends to be concealed versus visible. So keep that in mind as we go over this. Okay, so P for painless bright red bleeding because you have this placenta right here, right at the cervical opening. So when it bleeds, it can trickle down through the vaginal opening and you will see it and it tends to be visible. R for relaxed soft uterus that will be non-tender. This is a complete contrast in abruptio placenta where the uterus is gonna be tender and it can be hard, like rigid. Okay, E for episodes of bleeding that can be mild to profuse. This isn't going to be spotting, it's going to be noticeable. And this usually happens in the third trimester and this is because as the body's prepping for the baby, the cervix is starting to thin, which in the long run can start tearing these vessels in the placenta. So that's where you'll, you can start seeing that bleeding. V for visible bleeding, I for intercourse post bleeding. So if they have sexual intercourse with the placenta being so close to the cervix and cause damage and cause bleeding, they could see that. Or it can happen spontaneously or during labor. And then A, 
there will be an abnormal fetal position, like the breech position as the baby in the strolling is with the bottom first, or it can be transverse lie where they're sideways. And why is that? Well, normally the baby's head should be down, but it really can't be down because we have a placenta in the way. So the baby's just trying to get comfortable any way it can. So that's the most comfortable position. And it's because our placenta is in the way causing our abnormal position. And typically with this, if mom's not hemorrhaging and there's not some crazy tears in the placenta, the fetal heart rate tends to be normal as compared with um, abruptio placenta. Remember that placenta has just came off that uterine wall and it can be severe, it can be total or partial and the placenta is not functioning normally so that's really going to affect baby. So that's why you can see distress in abruptio placenta. Okay, now let's look at the nursing interventions. Okay, what's usually ordered for this condition is pelvic rest. So that would include no sexual intercourse, no vaginal exams and no like douching or anything like that and no abdominal manipulation because we don't want to cause any more damage to that vulnerable placenta because it can cause hemorrhage. And again, treatment varies depending on what is going on with the woman, how far along she is, what type of previa she has. So if there's no bleeding, they just see that the placenta is low in that cervix, over the cervix, whatever type, or there's very light bleeding, she may be on bed rest with no strenuous activities until the baby is ready to come and just continue to monitor. Now, if there is bleeding, probably will be hospitalized or mom and baby will be monitored continuously because there is a huge risk of hemorrhage. So she may need some blood transfusion, so she needs IV access type and cross match, see what blood type she is. Is she RH negative? If so, she'll need Rogam. External monitoring of the baby, making sure baby's doing good, not distressed, looking for any abnormal decelerations like late decelerations, etc. Seeing how much she is bleeding, because usually this is visible. So look at the pad count, look at the linen count. Are you having to change that out a lot? That's not a good sign, she's bleeding a lot. Also monitoring her vital signs per protocol, like every 15 minutes, making sure she's not entering into shock and monitoring her labs like CBCs and clotting levels. Position wise, you want her on that left side lane because that increases perfusion to the uterus, hence more perfusion to the baby via the placenta. And if the bleeding cannot be stopped, she may need a C-section to remove baby and hopefully get the bleeding stopped. Now, if contractions are causing this bleeding from where it's affecting the placenta, tocolytics can be administered, which stop contractions. And depending on how far along the woman is and if she's having issues, an amniocentesis can be performed, which is going to look at the lung maturity of the baby and steroids can be given to increase the maturity of the lung so the baby can be ready for delivery. Typically, a C-section is performed if there's partial or complete previa, and sometimes if it's marginal where that placenta is at the edge of the cervical opening, they may be able to deliver vaginally. But again, all this depends on what's going on with mom and baby and if she's stable or unstable. Now with this condition, there is a risk of where the placenta does not completely separate whenever it's ready to come out. And this is a condition called placenta accreta. And this increases the risk of hemorrhage because anytime placental parts are retained, you have risk of hemorrhage. And this is where that placenta is really just embedded deep within the uterus. And sometimes whenever this happens, the woman may have to have a hysterectomy where there's removal of the uterus. Okay, so that wraps up this review over placenta previa. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to take the free quiz and to subscribe to our channel for more videos.